Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Hester Biosciences Q3F522 Earnings Conference Call hosted by ICICI Securities Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, Please signal the operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Mitesh Shah from ICICI Securities Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thanks, Vijayan. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Hester Q3 and 9 month FI22 earnings conference call. We have the Senior Management, Mr. Rajiv Gandhi, CEO and Managing Director, Ms. Priya Gandhi, Executive Director, and Mr. Nikhil Jambal, Chief Financial Officer, participating in this call. I thank the management to give ISEC the opportunity to host this call. Over to you, sir. Um, yes, uh, good afternoon. I was just cut off, uh, and I just got uh, reconnected, so I hope I have not missed anything. I just heard your last sentence, but uh, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm uh, Rajiv Gandhi, CEO, Managing Director, Hester Biosciences, and as always, nice to connect with all of you and uh, uh, talk to you about uh, the general uh, functioning of the company. Uh, today, we are here to talk on the third quarter and the cumulative nine-month the results for this financial year FY22. While the press note which has been published has, we have tried to be as elaborate as possible. Um, uh, nonetheless, I would like to just go through a few highlights uh, um, and then I would uh, request all of you to ask me whatever questions you have. So for the quarter gone by as well as for the nine months gone by, as you see, the, uh, on a quarter-to-quarter -quarter basis, the revenues have gone up only by 2%, and there has been a little, uh, quite a, uh, there has been a dip in the profit, while on the nine-month level, uh, the revenues have gone up by 16%, and the profit has gone up by 11%. To address uh, the low revenue growth and the drop in net profit, uh, Q3 for the financial year FY21, though it was a COVID year, it was an exceptional quarter for us. In fact, Q3 last year as well as Q4 last year, both were exceptional because there, were, there was a major poultry disease outbreak in the whole country, which led to a spurt of uh, a demand for a few poultry vaccines. So, on a comparative basis, and this quarter it has been going on in the normal way, the growth has been normal. Therefore, on a quarter-to-quarter -quarter basis, it definitely appears that uh, there has been some, uh, uh, you know, there is hardly any growth. And talking about the profit, in uh, FY21, due to the COVID period, there was, and uh, the, the profitability also was again, exceptionally high because at that time we there was no movement of our sales people there were no cost uh, adding to the communications travel etc for the sales people though there was a big demand for poultry vaccine so both combined has a uh, impact on a comparative basis on a q3 basis another thing which i would like to highlight is that on a year on year basis we have always had an additional income in the form of licensing fees as well as services. If you look at our uh, this uh, <clears throat> FY22 Q3 quarter, there has been no license fees, while in the corresponding quarter, FY21, there was a licensing fee of a little over 3 crores. And if you look at a 9-month uh, ending period, we had around 10 crores of licensing fees and service, while in this year we have had totally only 3.65. So if we look at 
as that is also to be added in the revenues. Therefore, it appears that our turnover has gone up by only 2% on a quarter basis. But if you really remove that and if you look at our pure product sales, it is actually up by 9%. And if you look on a nine-monthly basis, it is actually up by 23%. Uh, coming on to the product that is the bifurcation in our case is vaccines and health products. The growth between the two compare uh, the com uh, the two compared quarters is zero. As I told you, we had an immense big demand during the COVID year in FY21 for the poultry vaccines, which this year we have been having a normal sale. Uh, so on a quarter-to-quarter quarter basis in Q3, the growth in vaccines is zero. Uh, and on a nine-monthly basis, the growth as, is being shown as 1-16%. But if you see on the health product side, on a quarter-to-quarter, quarter, we have grown 42%. And on a nine-month-to-nine-month nine uh, basis, we have grown to 49%. So overall, if... Uh, you uh, would uh, would analyze in terms of sales, where, where, whereas it does not show that, but there has been some growth as far as sales is concerned. Talking about uh, the profitability um, as far as the gross profit uh, and the uh, the net margins, etc., all are concerned. As we are again comparing on a quarter to quarter, when last year the expenses were less and the sales were very high. Therefore, definitely it has impacted and it has shown that there is a dip in our profitability and that dip also on a nine-month basis is seen because of the cumulative uh, effect. Uh, um, as last year, the expenses were reasonably less all throughout the year. Uh, <clears throat> talking about uh, the other developments as far as Hester Biosciences is concerned, we have been working on three vaccines, that is the classical swine fever, the lumpy skin disease, and the sheepfox uh, vaccine. And we hope to launch all these three vaccines in the first quarter of the next financial year. All these vaccines are in the final stage of their uh, quality control tests as well as regulatory approvals at this point of time. On the uh, PTR side, uh, I would like to say that the government of India had issued a tender for the buying of PPR vaccines. It was a national tender. We, as Hester Biosciences India, participated in the tender, and we were L1, and we have got the contract for the supply for the PPR vaccines for the next two years as per the tender, and that total quantity would... Uh, the approximately 20 crore doses uh, of vaccines in two years' time, taking a price of it a little over one rupee, we could easily say that our sales should be up by around 20 to 20. It would contribute to around 20 to 25 crores of sales in the next two years, additional to what we have been doing so far just on the PPR vaccine in itself. The Animal Health Division we are pushing it and we are making it grow. We are adding products, we are adding manpower, power. we are adding new territories and we hope to continue grow this division in India at a much faster rate than what the vaccine division will grow because the baseline also for the health products is uh, small as well as the market overall for health products in absolute rupee terms is much, much more bigger than the total market for the vaccines which are totally being manufactured by us. Talking about our capacity enhancement projects, uh, there are two projects that uh, we are currently working on. One is uh, increasing our capacity for the bulk antigen and second is increase the capacity for the fill finish for the finished vaccine. Both these projects are going as per the scheduled plan for completion, for implementation, and we are very con confident that uh, by the end of uh, Q4, we would be able to uh, uh, make the first vaccine in this. I think in the press note, we have mentioned by mistake Q4, 
F five twenty three. Ah, okay. I have I have the wrong say uh, note in my hand. Uh, by Q four and Q three. Ah, uh, in this, so ah uh, in this. Oh, sorry. In Q four, we would be able to ah uh, commercialize both these ah uh, um, current expansions. And with this expansion, our quantity would go up by 100% in terms of our capability to make the current vaccines which we are already uh, manufacturing coming to our subsidiaries hester africa we have received the licenses for uh, the uh, manufacturing we have taken a few batches just 5 days ago we had the final inspection for allowing us to start the marketing of the vaccine the inspection has already gone through we are awaiting the final report informally we have already been told that uh, we would be allowed to start uh, the marketing um, in hester africa so in the next 4 to 5 days we should be making the first invoice out of hester africa which would be a big historic uh, event for us yes the sales would slowly build up it's not that to uh, the day we get the permission it would be a very big built up sales but we have taken three vaccines in production the batches are ready for sale one is the ppr vaccine nigerian strain that is used in africa second is the newcastle disease vaccine for the poultry and the third is the uh, uh, cbpp uh, the full form of is contagious bovine pluro pneumonia uh, vaccine so that is uh, the third vaccine we have already taken the batches and hopefully in the next few days we should be uh, launching them texas uh, life science continues to grow in as much proportion as what our health with, uh, health product business is growing because all our products are being produced over there and being marketed by us uh, in hester coming to hester nepal there has been some progress um, at hester nepal and uh, we are further pushing the progress the ppr tenders from fao have just started trickling in and we are hoping that it would uh, by the end of this financial year we would actually cross the turnover that we had um, in the fi20 fi21 was very bad because uh, of covid there were no tenders no movement no flights coming in and out of kathmandu and as you are aware all our vaccines are only shipped through air there is nothing that is sent by uh, sea and another interesting thing which i would like to highlight which probably i might have highlighted in the earlier uh, quarterly call is that oie which is the world animal health uh, uh, organization uh, Uh, it is a french organization oie uh, earlier it was a french name oie but now they just use the word oie the full form is the world animal health organization uh, they had uh, put out a tender to create a vaccine bank for ppr vaccine there were two companies that have won the tender one is us and one is another moroccan company that business too was to have started in this quarter unfortunately it has not yet started but if that business starts hopefully in this quarter we are very hopeful that that in itself would recover make us recover completely out of all the current situation that we are in at this point of time uh, talking about hester tanzania our trading entity uh, the trading entity uh, we are working on the trading entity at the same time we have acquired 50% stake in another trading entity in africa wherein we want to transfer all the uh, trading activity that is thrishul exim and uh, through there we will now build up uh, the whole uh, trading activity and uh, the base in itself with thrishul would be more than 4 million because that is what is expected to be done in this year as against the smaller turnover that we earlier had in hester tanzania uh, hester thrishul looks very promising and there are many initiatives in trading that we have embarked on and we are confident that this will become a very big uh, venture as far as we are concerned last but not the least coming back to hester india we have 
now taken a decision to launch a pet division uh, this is a new division that would be launched uh, soon i would just request uh, priya to talk on this uh, division good afternoon everyone so i think in the last press note we had uh, mentioned that we would be coming up with a pet uh, division so from that time until right now there has been some progress at the back end uh, wherein we've uh, started identifying people geographies products that we want to get into to begin with it will mostly be uh, pharmaceutical products and not biologicals uh, which is uh, i mean considering hester's strength has always been biologicals but this time we are doing we are taking another uh, we are going we are taking another approach wherein we are start, first starting with health healthcare products and then we will slowly move on to uh, vaccines in this particular division and uh, we are hopeful that we will be launching first few uh, products uh, by the end of this next uh, upcoming quarter which is q4 and uh, in the next financial year maybe in the third or the fourth quarter we would probably have the full range of products that i intend that we intend to uh, launch so uh, yes thank you so that uh, makes us give an overall of all the things happening at uh, hester uh, that completes uh, our uh, presentation over to all of you for your question thank you ladies and gentlemen we will now begin with the question and answer session anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star and one on your touch tone telephone if you wish to remove yourself in the question queue you may press star and two participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Ankit Kanodia from SmartSync Services. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, sir, uh, I have two questions. Uh, number one is regarding the uh, COVID vaccine which we are preparing. So, uh, in our press release also and also in our initial address, we have mentioned about the uh, a uh, spectacular growth which we are expecting in that uh, volumes in that uh, my question was regarding the margins and returns on those vaccines compared to what we are doing right now so will there be any uh, uh, change in that and how much of that you can give us some guidance uh yeah thank you for your question and i would like to apologize that in my briefing i completely overlooked uh, the covid-19 vaccine project uh, let me just brief you on that project and i will also answer your question uh, the yes. current status of the project is that uh, the construction work is going on there have been a little bit of a delay because a lot is dependent on imported uh, consumables as well as imported equipment and everything to be shipped from europe has definitely got uh, uh, delayed in their shipment so we hope that uh, by this uh, by the uh, you know by this quarter being ended we are able to complete the function uh, we are able to start working uh, you know complete the construction and by approximately april may start doing the trial production everything is going on very systematically as far as this project is concerned we are very confident and uh, we already feel proud that we would be having one of the best bsl3 facilities in the country once it is ready now uh, talking about the business generation from this project uh, our uh, facility has been created to produce approximately 7070 lakh doses of uh, the drug substance for the covaxin which will be supplied to bharat biotech and uh, let's presume that we would slowly build up this we, we begin with 20 lakhs and then in the next 2 3 months we come up with the 70 lakh uh, uh, capacity and we would supply it to bharat biotech while we are still working on the margins etc 
for this project because this currently is uh, uh, everything is uh, everything is being worked on at this point of time as you understand this agreement with us as well as bharat biotech entering into agreement all has happened due to an emergency situation in the country and we are all working towards it but having said that we are confident that our turnover should definitely shoot up sizably um, uh, with uh, this project coming through in terms of profitability i would like to not address or talk anything on it at this point of time i would at an appropriate time probably before the next uh, investors call through a special uh, call or a press Uh, uh briefing we would definitely give these details yes sir and my next question was regarding our uh, tanzania operation which has just begun so uh, as per our channel check uh, what we are uh, hearing is that there is a lot of problem in the sense that uh, even the government in uh, some of the governments not particularly in tanzania in africa have uh, delayed their uh, payments so as in when we are entering this uh, space and geography uh, what would be our mix in terms of government orders and also in terms of uh, private orders any guidance you would like to give yeah at the moment we are focusing on the private market on the trade market because that is something which uh, is always uh, you know we would not want to we have not constructed the whole plant just based on any tender business and some of the vaccines are to be produced for the first time so they have never even been tendered before so that is definitely not an uh, approach that we are looking at we are looking at selling it in the private market create the demand create awareness and sell uh, once the tenders uh, tender business comes up uh, we are even hoping to do the tender business but if at all and whenever it comes up we will take a call at that point of time on how to supply how to secure our payment but currently we want to take the risk by creating the demand rather than uh, looking or worrying at the tender business because that's the real long way to go if you really look at it uh, um, any tender business which starts in any country for any particular vaccines etc it is only in the starting period and then ultimately it has to come down within the private sector and to be sold distributed manufactured by the private sector so we would want to start this focus right from the beginning and let us see how it takes us further thank you so much sir this is this really helped uh, one last uh, point if i may ask uh, regarding the covin uh, co vaccin which we are doing so uh, is it uh, fair to assume that uh, whatever revenue we may uh, get through that vaccine uh, it would be the bulk of that will happen only in fy23 and maybe some in fy24 and then we might not have any revenue from them assuming that covid uh, would be a history of iden yeah the revenues have to be looked uh, have to be looked only in fy23 definitely not in fy22 23 24 we all wish hope and pray that covid goes away and that the need for the vaccine also goes down because that is what we all wish and pray but considering that we are manufacturing it and we are giving it as a preventive dose and therefore the government is also push and everybody is pushing for a preventive medication in terms of vaccines we are mm-hmm. also preparing plans on what next to be done with this beautiful facility created by us how we take it further what are the other vaccines that we will uh, be manufacturing this is our path our gateway to get into human vaccines but we do not want to dilute our thinking at this point of time we have taken up a national responsibility so we are only focusing on the covid vaccine yes after 2 years uh, we sure uh, we are pretty sure that in the next 6 months time we would have plans and if covid continues for any reason be rest assured our focus will at that time remain only on covid sir and if the if the covid is uh, history by then and uh, what would be our uh, this capacity or this facility will be available for our poultry and uh, animal vaccine or should we have to do some capex related to that 
uh, we will then on this facility it is a bsl3 facility our focus ideally would be on human vaccine thank you so much sir thank That's you that's it from my side thank you so much thank you thank you the next question is from the line of kuntal cha from oak lane capital please go ahead good afternoon rajiv bhai thank you after knowing yeah and thanks for the clarity on the press release side i just had two questions ivri ihbe and lot of lot of governmental organizations keep out licensing means they keep licensing technology what is the plans we have on licensing the technology from government institution and also from third party commercial institution considering now we will have that BS, bsl3 both both for so both for uh, animals and human and secondly we what was this uh, 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 question on what is the break even on uh, hester africa at which we break even at what level of sales after you know uh, we we break, break even at pbt level okay answering your first question in terms of technology uh, hester for its animal vaccines we have bought technology from indian veterinary uh, research institute we have also bought uh, technology from other uh, international institutes etc we are always open and looking at uh, uh, acquiring technology in fact we have also acquired the technology to make a new a uh, brucella vaccine uh, and that technology has been bought uh, also uh, from the government of india from indian council of agricultural research so even the vaccines which i just mentioned classical swine fever vaccine sheep pox lumpy skin all these are bought from indian veterinary research institute uh, it is our endeavor that whenever any technology is available Uh, we are one of the first it is on record even if you go and visit any of these institutes we are the first to pitch to buy that technology we continue we shall continue that spirit in acquiring new technologies um, and wherever bsl3 is to be used yes uh, we will use it one thing is that that if we use it as human we cannot do it in for animal if we use it for animal we cannot use it for human so we will have to take a call our current call is very clear human let time pass by let us see how things unfold but for the moment it's clear on the human side coming to your africa uh, question on the break even i think our break even should be at approximately utilization of 20 to Uh, around 20 to 25% capacity just one follow up question on my side so yes. uh, is there a, a plan to even uh, uh, license the uh, technology for manufacturing human vaccines uh, i as i just answered uh, the first question that uh, we all wish and hope that covid goes away but at the same time if covid remains we will continue with co making the bulk antigen the drug substance for uh, co vaccine if the situation changes be rest assured that it would be our next endeavor to search what next in human vaccine thank you i'll join the queue thank you Thank you. The next question is from the line of Viraj Mahadevia, an individual mm-hmm. investor. Please go ahead. What we are thinking sectors. Sectors. Uh, uh, I can't Viraj, hear you. I can't hear you, Viraj. As there's no response from the current participant, we'll move on to the next. That is from the line of Mithun Ashwat from Kiva Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah. Um, Yeah, you may have already discussed this, but I uh, joined a little bit late. Uh, just wanted to understand uh, when is the Africa unit going to start, and is there any target for your revenues for FI 23 from the Africa business? Uh, number two is also on the uh, Covaxin opportunity. Just wanted to understand in FI 23 anything, any targets for that also that you see, and when is that? production likely to start uh, those were the couple of questions that i had yeah, i did answer them but nonetheless in brief i will add it once again one was uh, uh, the africa 
uh, we have already got the manufacturing license. We would be getting the marketing license in the next few days. So within a week from now, uh, we would start ma marketing the first three vaccines which we have already produced. In terms of forecast, there were well-defined forecast plans, everything before even the COVID year, then came in COVID. We are a little bit grappling towards on how to redefine the forecasting, the marketing activities in Africa. I do not have a precise answer to give you at this point of time. We are working hard. Uh, let this one quarter go. Let us move a little mm -hmm. further. Then we will firm up things because uh, of COVID and uh, many other issues. You know, things have gone a little haywire. But uh, I think given these three months' time, we should be able to be a little sure on things in terms of the covaxin um, uh, vaccine drug substance pro project we have uh, uh, created a capacity to manufacture 7070 lakh doses that should build up slowly from the first one 20 lakhs going on towards 70 lakhs uh, hopefully by april may we should uh, may we should be taking the trial production and based on that we'll be taking the commercial production and uh, that's what it is yeah i'm just trying to understand on the covaxin opportunity in terms of for us revenues for next year is there anything that we've targeted uh, we are uh, we are in talk with bharat biotech uh, we have yet to firm up the exact revenue model not that everything is undecided but uh, the, the models are yet under uh, definition so once that happens uh, by the time we reach the commercial uh, the stage of commercial manufacturing selling everything would be well defined as you are aware this has this has been happening due to an emergency situation there is a lot of support that is being given to us by BIRAC, by the department of biotechnology everybody is involved um, and uh, uh, once there is clarity or more clarity on this i would definitely uh, give this information to you all as well as to our shareholders yeah so if you just allow me a follow up i just want to understand is the covaxin opportunity similar in terms of the margins that our uh, vaccine business is giving us because we've done a reasonable amount of capex right for the covaxin opportunity as well so just wanted to get a sense on that. Uh, the margins for any loan licensing agreement, for any job work agreement are always going to be less than those margins of a product which we are manufacturing from basic, where we are manufacturing the final project product and we are marketing. So that margins are bound to be lesser than what it would be for our existing vaccine. Okay, sir. And... This one, one last one on the uh, uh, animal product business. We've seen that I think there's a little bit of uh, maybe a loss in this quarter. So just wanted to understand uh, uh, what is our uh, thought on this because I think this was one of the areas where we want to focus and grow quite aggressively. So uh -huh. just, just, just wanted some thoughts on that. Uh, um, in terms of uh, this, uh, uh, you, uh, we are talking about the quarter ended uh, 31st December, okay? Uh, that, that, is that what you are looking at? That's right, that's right. Yeah. Uh, I'll just give it to Nikhil, our CFO, let him address this and I will address the subjective part. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, so, as regards uh, the uh, animal healthcare products, uh, if we see overall for the nine months, uh, there has been uh, uh, positive uh, positive uh, uh, profit. Uh, as regards the quarter, uh, since there has been uh, uh, increase into the marketing expenses uh, during this period, and to that extent, there is a nominal uh, loss of 10 lakh rupees, which has happened in this quarter. So, that's the overall uh, scenario which has happened. Right. Just what is the outlook on that business? Because I think there was a quite a large focus on that, and that was one of the areas where we are going to see quite a bit of growth. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, health product is 
the segment which would be growing faster than the poultry segment and uh, we are confident that we will grow this business we are aggressively spending more i would not use the word spending wrong word we are investing more which uh, on the marketing so on a balance sheet term point anything that we talk subjectively as investing it goes in the balance sheet as an expenditure so we are increasing the field force we are putting in lot many other uh, as we are adding products adding people to develop products so those are the um, areas which have actually caused uh, uh, for this but uh, you could just say that this is a very small abrasion a temporary abrasion it we take it as an irrelevant situation right sir and if you don't mind just one last one in terms of your 2 uh, 3 year outlook you had mentioned that the domestic business could double in terms of revenues and the africa business could give you another 250 crores uh, so literally maybe tripling of your revenues over the next 3 years i just wanted to understand in terms of capex are we pretty much through for all this and it is more about sweating the assets or to reach that target of say 750 crores we would need uh, further capex as well if you could just give us uh, we at the current uh, capital expenditure that we have made at this point of time in increasing the uh, as what is shown in our balance uh, in our press note as i have mentioned to uh, uh, to uh, uh, increase our antigen production as well as the fill finish this would definitely first of all make our capacity multiplied by 2 of what it is at this point of time with that in place with africa coming in place uh we, let's see we are reasonably aggressive but uh, the capex now required to reach higher milestones like 400 500 600 crores uh, the the ratio or the uh, i mean the input output ratio would definitely be on a very positive side towards the output thank you sir thank you a reminder to the participants anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star and one The next question is from the line of Anirudh Chetty from Solidarity Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir, for taking my question. Uh, so my first question is: I just want to understand the gross profit margin movement. You know, uh, if I look at it quarter on quarter, uh, and you know, nine month versus nine month, it's dropped by ten, eleven percent, and about four point seven percent. Would this be explained primarily due to the product mix? which is health products doing much better than vaccines or is there anything else that contributes to it uh i think this yeah sorry not that i think i'm sure of it uh, that uh, the margins on vaccines are more than what the margins on the health products are with the growth of the health product there could be a little bit squeezing of the margin but uh, in days to come the if you look at absolute figures we will still come out to be far ahead yes uh, when uh, now our focus definitely we would want to keep it uh, on the health products but on the same time look at the other opportunities that we are getting in terms of the ppr vaccine being supplied to the government etc which will again give us a big boost uh, Uh, in terms of revenue etc which again we would be having good margin so i think overall yes i do admit that there could be a dip uh, uh, in the margins etc but over a period of time i do not think that we should uh, remain disturbed in, or it should be at a lesser level Uh, so I just want to deabridge this a little bit. Um, uh, how, how would the gross profit margins compare segment? You know, if I just compare vaccines versus health, how do the GP margins compare? And at a larger scale, you know, health is a bit small today, but at a larger scale, how would the EBITDA margins compare uh, for these two segments? Vaccines would be more, health products would be less. Uh, okay. Uh, would you be able to quantify it, sir? i would not have those details with me right now 
to be able to give so detailed quantifications. I'm sorry about it. No worries, no worries. Uh, I'll just move on to the next question. Um, uh, you know, if I just look at your, uh, say, your key products, both on the poultry and the large animal vaccine side, you know, if you look at uh, PPR, Brucella, goat pox, uh, what I wanted to understand is typically for, uh, you know, on a per bird basis or per animal basis, how many doses of these vaccines would be required over the life of the, of the animal? Uh, just a minute. Uh, in poultry, in a broiler, the life of the broiler in itself is six weeks. And as for the vaccination schedule, one, uh, uh, you can say uh, two doses of Newcastle, two doses of Gamboro, and one dose of, uh, yeah, yeah, only two vaccines. In terms of layers, there are multiple uh, vaccinations to be done um, in which you have uh, five to seven doses of Newcastle, maybe two, three doses of the inactivated uh, Newcastle, then you have the Gamboro, then you have the Marex uh, disease vaccine. There are fixed schedules at which these vaccines are given. On the cattle, poultry, uh, sorry, sheep, goat, PPR vaccine normally is given uh, every, every two years, one shot every two years. Uh, Brucella is given once in the lifetime of the animal uh, in, to the female calf. So, so the, likewise, it, see the vaccine, it depends upon the disease. Like for example, MMR is taken only once in the life of human being. In co-vaccine, we all are running around to take the third dose, fourth dose. So each vaccine has a different application uh, in the host body. Like, for example, lumpy skin disease, that has to be given probably uh, once in a year. Um, so, likewise, th th there are different for different vaccines. Hmm. Got it. Got it. Uh, uh, just one final question. Uh, you know, uh, I, I just want to understand the, the supply chain for the pet animal business a little better. Uh, how will the manufacturing be done? Would we be doing it through Texas? Or, uh, you know, are we partnering with someone else? And also, how would the distribution work? Uh, are we looking to set up a completely new distribution uh, uh, team for this product? And if you just quantify how many people we are looking to hire for this? Uh, okay. In terms of manufacturing, we have Texas. We have many other options also. So, um, because pe uh, PET is, again, a specialized, uh, uh, very different, where... Um, the, the product mix is different, the need is different, everything. Texas is one of the uh, companies which could produce a few. Then there are many other options that we have. In terms of marketing and distribution, it will be a completely separate marketing and distribution uh, uh, setup. Of course, our depots, which are there in Bangalore, in Chandigarh, in Pune, the depots would be the same, but further from there, the distribution, because uh, uh, pet uh, products are not sold through the normal um, animal uh, healthcare dealers or the actual users, I mean, uh, so it would be completely different. Got it. And uh, are we looking to do outsource manufacturing for uh, pet animals or are we looking to set up uh, a unit? Uh, at the moment, uh, so outsource, uh, sorry, your question is, do we produce for others or we buy from others? Uh, yeah, no, so for the pet uh, animal products, you know, we can use Texas, but, you know, for the products that Texas can't do, will we look uh, We will to... buy from elsewhere. We will not be producing at the moment by ourselves in Hester. Got it, got it, okay. Well, this is very clear. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Aparva Mehta from AM Investments. Please go ahead. Hello, sir, uh, I just wanted to ask uh, what is the amount of capex we had done for this uh, developing this uh, co vaccine facility? Uh, can you quantify that? 
uh, our uh, uh, this uh, for the covaxin project our investment should be approximately 60 to 70 crores 60 to 70 crores is is there any cost overrun in this project because we were i think we were at 40 crores kind of thing and i think uh, no, now it is 60 no, no, no. It was all budgeted uh, that way and there has uh, we are looking at still increasing the capacity while it is going on, but there has been no cost overrun or anything of that sort. Okay. And any more CapEx uh, for next year, any big CapEx needed or we are done with the CapEx program? Uh, for the moment, we are done, but we, we never know what is in store for us next year. Uh, there On the animal side, we are more or less done. On the human side, all depends upon how the drug substance demand for co-vaccine goes on. Based on that, uh, we might even look at getting into a fill finish for human vaccines or this might continue. So at the moment, the situation is a bit fluid. Okay. And normally, what will be the payback period for this type of capex in a normal circumstances kind of thing if you want to you know in normal circumstances nobody just produces the drug substance and gives it uh, uh, but uh, we are looking at a payback period of uh, between four to six years for our our project this project yes oh, okay. and and uh, you know uh, when we are looking at uh, uh, Hester Africa, which we are going for in a big way. Uh, what kind of marketing was trained to we need, or what kind of uh, you know cap, uh, expenses you had to upfront do it, and uh, what is your sense of you know getting uh, going into market when you are you are moving uh, <clears throat> in Africa? So uh, are, are, are we easily are able to struggle to sell it or uh, can you throw some light on that? Uh, marketing of our vaccines in Africa is definitely going to be uh, a little bit uh, an uphill task. I would not use the word challenging because then uh, that's not the right word. But uh, yes, there are going to be many uh, things that we would have to resolve one by one. You must keep in mind that while our facility is a multi-purpose facility to produce many vaccines, most of the vaccines that we would be producing are going to be for the first time introduced uh, in the African continent. So it's something till today there was no vaccine, so there was no market, but now we are creating a vaccine that might create a big market. So it's like uh, we are all working towards it. It is a very long-term project that we have taken, but it's not that our returns are going to be delayed, etc. Uh, there has been good help from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in this project financially. And uh, we are reason uh, reasonably sure that we will overcome all these hurdles. We will create a marketing setup. We have already appointed distributors in quite a few countries. We have a few salespeople for the moment only in Tanzania. We will start hiring even more people. Uh, it's just that we were waiting for getting this approval. Now that we have got it, now that we are sure on how we are going to take it further, now we will embark on a defined plan. Okay. And we will be launching these three products which you have mentioned uh, earlier. In the next seven days. In, in the next seven days. Okay. And, and there, uh, there are any competition for this product from overseas or anything? I think Africa and any manufacturer in Africa who must be producing Our, other than this. There are a few government labs. There is one private lab in Morocco. There is one private lab in South Africa. Uh, but besides that, there is no uh, nobody else. Uh, producing or even marketing any of these products. There are none of these vaccines are at the moment even coming from Europe into Africa. Okay. I mean, okay. it would be noteworthy for all of you that vaccines in Africa today are sold at anything between uh, three to 10 times the price at what they are sold in India. 
it is not our endeavor to exploit and sell vaccines at a higher rate we have okay. a commitment to the tanzanian government we have a commitment to the bill and melinda gates foundation that we would make sure that this is addressed well no exploitation is done yes our costs are high therefore our product uh, selling prices would also be high but uh, Uh, we don't take this as an opportunity to sell a vaccine at 10 times the price because that is not looking at an opportunity that is exploiting which we will not do oh, great great and on this uh, tender project of government of india which is which is going on we had got this order of uh, almost uh, 20 crore vaccine doses uh, for three years yeah pp uh. Yes. any other tenders which we are trying to you know bigger tenders coming in the way or any other tenders which are there on the pipeline at the moment there are no other tenders but the state governments are buying some other vaccines like lumpy skin disease sheep pox vaccine etc goat pox they are buying the uh, through state tenders okay. and the peak turnover for this uh, vaccine is around 20 crore for the whole uh, the two years contract yes that is 25 crore yes yes okay 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 thanks a lot and yeah wish you all the best thank you thank you a reminder to the participants anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star and one the next question is from the line of irishan an individual investor please go ahead thank you my most of the questions have been answered so can you just help me out with the revenue and profit figures at nepal tanzania and life science thank you uh just a minute nepal uh, yeah i i'll just uh, request nikhil to give the figures and then if there are any questions i will answer yeah that's it for my end thank you so in case of uh, nepal the uh, sales have been uh, 7 crore rupees and uh, overall there is been a uh, lot of 80 lakhs uh, uh, in the 9 month period and in case of uh, texas uh, 20 crores is the overall sales with uh, 1 crore rupees as profit and in case of tanzania uh, 2 crores has been the sales and uh, uh, 11 lakhs is the loss uh, in that entity thank you that's it Thank Does you. that answer? A reminder to the participants: anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Yasir Lakhrawala from N3 Investments. Please go ahead. uh good afternoon uh, rajiv bhai uh, uh could you help us understand uh, you know what is the contribution of the in your know, institutional tender business to our total revenues uh hester india yeah in hester india and uh, uh, at the, the moment business. maximum uh, institutional business would be a, uh, in the whole so around 4 to 5% okay and uh, uh so uh, rajiv bhai also probably wanted to understand is uh, you know what is the say, strength of our uh, field force in india and how do we measure uh, the the productivity right as in like you know in in pharma we have mr productivity so do we have similar metrics for our field force uh we have around uh, between uh, 200 to 250 sales uh, people in the field and uh, in terms of measuring their uh, i mean there are systems in place uh, mm -hmm. i mean i would not really know these uh, inner details but there are all these uh, uh, systems uh, just in it priya would want to answer that sorry would, would you want to know how much is a per person or uh, what is your question exactly yeah so yeah in per person in, in terms of uh, you know productivity right like in, in pharma we have uh, we measure you know the mr of productivity so what is the productivity for field force in india and for our uh, you know uh, consolidated business 
Rahul. Okay, so uh, no, there there is a measuring uh, methodology which we use in uh, in in our case as well. Uh, mm-hmm. Speaking of the strength for poultry healthcare, the number of people are less compared to animal healthcare because the the whole division works a little bit differently. So of course, mm-hmm. the per person productivity in poultry would be a little bit more because the number of people are less, while the turnover in the poultry healthcare is more. While in animal healthcare, it works a little differently. It's more to do with how you're saying pharmaceutical companies work, wherein the number of people are more, while uh, the per person uh, is a little less. Fair enough. Thank, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ask a question, you may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Anirudh Shetty from Solidarity Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for the follow-up. Uh, two questions from my end. Uh, so if I look at your uh, your uh, working capital days, say over the you know, last eight to ten years, you know our inventory days has improved substantially. You know we would have been about 190 days in FI12, and now we're around up 100, 110. So I just wanted to understand, you know, what were the primary reasons for such uh, you know dramatic improvement, and you know going forward, do you see further scope for improvement uh, in this number? One thing is this, you know, as the business progresses, we become a little bit wiser and wiser on how to manage all these things on the lighter side. But, uh, you know, over the period, uh, we are dealing with people all across the country who are not uh, doing a very structured business. So we keep on trying to educate them, enforce things on them, force them on uh, inventory management, trying to become, we become strict on payment. So, you know, these are the things that we uh, do to really uh, uh, try to manage the inventory well. We make them plan for what they would want to sell, etc. So I think, uh, uh, I mean, it's just that management. I mean, there's nothing else that we really have done towards this. Got it. And do you see further scope for improvement from your end? Further scope for improvement? Um, I mean, we are trying continuously. I do not uh, know at this point of time. Uh, uh, but, you know, we, we are continuously trying to make sure that inventory, we, we try to become as efficient as possible. That's all, you know. Got it. I have not... I wasn't ready for uh, this, neither have I studied this before answering the question. So, therefore, my little bit of an inability to really give you on a statistical manner. No problem, sir. Uh, and the final question is uh, just a follow up on the Hester Tanzania uh, question. You know, given that, uh, you know, the one is there is a huge pricing difference, and vaccines, as we know, it is inherently profitable. But we also have a certain understanding with, you know, the government of Tanzania and you know, the great foundation. So if I, you know, I don't want to get a specific number, but if I look at it and compare it with our India, uh, you know, vaccine business, would the margins be more or less, you know, broadly similar at a larger scale or more? It, it could be higher. Will, not okay. could, it will. Got it, got it. Awesome. Th- thank you, sir. That was very helpful. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may I please press star and one. As there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to the management for the closing comments. Uh, so thank you all for your questions and uh, as always, you know, it's been nice. This interaction has always been nice and be rest assured we as a team are working hard towards ensuring that the company progresses well, does everything. If there are any uh, speed breakers, we try to make sure that the speed breakers are crossed uh, and we again regain the speed or uh, 
and try to take the business further with without really compromising on the philosophy with which we have been doing so far and i think that's about it there is nothing more thank you all and hoping to hear from you all and hoping to talk to you all again quarter thank you